Hello YouTube, welcome to Discover Ross, and today we'll be talking about dinosaurs. More specifically, weird dinosaurs with tiny arms from Madagascar. Now, Lake Cretaceous Madagascar is a treasure trove for weird fossils, but today I'll be focusing on what is probably the most famous dinosaur from the area, Majungasaurus crenatissimus. Now, you might know this creature as Majungafolus, but I'll get to that in a second. First, let's take a moment to appreciate how weird Majungasaurus was. Honestly, the only thing that annoys me about T-Rex's arms are short jokes is that Majungasaurus has such hilariously tiny arms compared to even T-Rex. I mean, they don't even pass the chest, so they're kind of useless. These robust yet short arms with inflexible clawless fingers are found all along the family Majungasaurus belongs to the Abelosaurids, but are taken to an extreme by the later members such as Carnotaurus Seistri and the aforementioned Majungasaurus. Besides the arms, we notice a variety of other odd features, for example, its bulldog-like face. Though not as extreme as a bulldog's, Majungasaurus's skull was rather proportionately short compared to its height. Majungasaurus's skull also terminated rather abruptly by its nostrils, and its skull was rather wide compared to other abelosaurs, and it possessed more teeth than any other abelosaur besides its earlier cousin Rugops primus. Majungasaurus's head would have also sported keratinized bosses protecting a nasal ridge and a small horn sat above its eyes too. More weird facts about its proportions still stand out. Its neck was rather long compared to other theropod dinosaurs and also very muscular. It had some of the proportionately shortest limbs among theropods. Combine this with the fact that its head and neck seem to have been naturally oriented to remain practically horizontal compared to the more pronounced S-curve in other theropods, we have a very strange looking dinosaur. So let's learn a little more about the history of this dinosaur, shall we? Majungasaurus was discovered by French paleontologist Charles Deperay by the Betsa Boca River, what is now the tourist attraction of Mahajanga province in Madagascar. Deperay discovered two teeth, a claw, and several vertebrae in 1896, and he referred these specimens to a new species he coined nestled within Megalosaurus. This species was Megalosaurus crenatissimus, and the reason he thought these remains belonged to Megalosaurus was due to the genus being what we call a wastebasket taxon. Wastebasket taxon are often genera, and they're used when new remains are too scant to be confidently applied to another genus. Megalosaurus was a big star of the 1800s, considering it as the first large carnivorous dinosaur known, and that's part of the reason that a dinosaur from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar could be referred to a completely separate dinosaur from the Middle Jurassic of England. What's funny is that Deperay would even go on in the future to refer his finds to Dryptosaurus instead, which was closer in time frame, but the only fossils that we know can be confidently referred to Dryptosaurus come from New Jersey. Moving on by almost six decades, another French paleontologist named René Loisat kept searching for prehistoric mammals and kept stumbling upon dinosaurs instead. Dinosaurs are always eager to steal a spotlight from mammals. Did you know that Dedelphinon was a badger-sized mammal that lived alongside T. rex that had the strongest proportional bite force of any mammal? And I'm getting off topic again. Uh, Lavasat. Anyways, Lavasat found a portion of a jaw in the Mavereno formation, fairly close to Deperay's discoveries. While the teeth were definitely similar to Deperay's finds, Lavasat realized the jawbone was completely unique, and in reference to a Mahajanga region, named his discovery Majungasaurus crenatissimus, saying that Deperay's discoveries and subsequent ones in the region belonged to this new genus. Then another exciting discovery happened in 1979. Hans-Dieter Seuss and Philip Takei, the French are very heavily involved in Majungasaurus's history, described the first ever pachycephalosaur from the southern hemisphere based on the discovery of a head dome that they referred to the newly founded Majungafolus atopus. This was very exciting news in the paleontological world as pachycephalosaurs has previously only been known from North America and Asia. Finds like this still resonate in the paleontological community. It's still argued over whether or not tyrannosaurs and other dinosaurs roamed the southern hemisphere. Moving on to the internet's favorite decade, the 90s, more and more finds were being yielded from Madagascar thanks in part to David Krauss, not to mention dozens of other scientists. Among these thousands of fossils being unearthed would come an almost entirely complete skull of Medungasaurus, and a southern pack of Kephalosauri theory ended up sadly dying with the skull, as the team noted what Dieter Seuss and Takei had thought was a pack of Kephalosaurus head dome was in fact the frontal horn that could be found over Medungasaurus's eyes. Following papers would later clarify that the name of Majungasaurus took priority over the later Majungafolus, though this hasn't stopped books and documentaries from referring to Majungasaurus as Majungafolus, and that's honestly really annoying. Now for some little more description on Majungasaurus. Majungasaurus was an abelosaurid and was closely related to Indian abelosaurus such as Rajasaurus and Rahiolosaurus, and a French abelosaur called Archivenator. These genera, along with Indosaurus, belong to a subfamily called the Majungasaurines, Majungasaurus measured approximately 18 to 20 feet long, could have weighed around a ton, with possibilities of larger specimens. It was the apex predator of the floodplains of the Mavereno Formation and ranged from approximately 70 to 66 million years ago, right up until the end of dinosaurs. Majungasaurus, rather bizarre in itself, lived on an island of oddballs that included herbivorous crocodiles, flying dromaeosaurs, and possibly the identity of Rahonavis is unclear. This 
thing. Giant python-like snakes and a predatory frog as big as a human baby. Given its size compared to other carnivorous animals of the region, it is likely that Majungasaurus was the only predator that contemporary sauropods, such as Rapetosaurus krausi and Vahini deparati, had to fear, barring the possibility of flocks of Rahuanavis descending on prey like piranhas in the movies, stripping their prey to their bone in a minute. Given its stocky sides and strong head and neck muscles, it is plausible that Majungasaurus employed the hold-on-for-dear-life strategy, otherwise known as the self-explanatory bite-and-hold strategy. This has even led to speculation that perhaps Majungasaurus was highly camouflaged and merely waited for prey to come to it, like the land version of a wobegong or a carpet shark. Though, please keep in mind this is just fun speculation and doesn't necessarily constitute an actual hypothesis, since this behavior would be somewhat hard to confirm on pure fossil record. Bite marks on Rapetosaurus bones do confirm that Majungasaurus at least fed on them, living or not, but there's even a more interesting tidbit known about Majungasaurus's diet. Given bite marks found in the bones of several Majungasaurus specimens, we can determine that Majungasaurus was a cannibal. It is certainly not sure if Majungasaurus would have hunted his own kind or merely scavenged dead remains. What we could be seeing here is a squabble over a carcass that resulted in the killing and ingesting of a certain Majungasaurus, similar to modern Komodo dragons, or it could be something along the line of male lions which will kill any cubs that do not belong to them in order to propagate their bloodline. Or it could just be a desperate Majungasaurus looking for a meal in hard times. We're not exactly sure, paleontology is rife with fun speculation. What we do know is this means Majungasaurus is the only confirmed cannibalistic dinosaur. Remember that those Coelophysis fossils were proven to be of a small crocodile, though it's extremely likely that many more dinosaurs would have been cannibalistic at some point in time. Given that we now have so many specimens of Majungasaurus, we know a lot about its anatomy and lifestyle, and a recent study clarifies that Majungasaurus may have been one of the slowest growing theropods known to date. See, when it comes to growing, dinosaurs are weird. Dinosaurs were bad girls, they lived fast and died young. Tyrannosaurus gained over a thousand pounds a year as a teenager starting around 14 and ending around 18 years old and is probably dead by the time it hit 30. T-Rex was also sexually mature in its teen years before it hit full size, and this is a trend found in many other dinosaurs. The Majungasaurus was a late bloomer. Based on growth lines present in the bones, it would have taken a full 20 years to reach maturity. Can answer all the jokes you want about here about T-Rex being popular while Majungasaurus is a nerd stuck at home, and in fact, I'll use that as a closer.